by such tears, my child, my life, why do you remorse at this heavenly sight? I lived long, far and strong, and saw your kind flourish and mourn. I was there when you crossed your fair sea alone, and saw you become a destiny of your own. But now I must go, my time is at an end. I cannot stay, my destiny beckons, I shall bend. Gladly I depart from my firstborn kin, others await for the message I must bring. So do not despair, for I am here, and shall always be where my warmth prevails. So close your eyes and live your life, I shall see you again, my blood, my child. Hello, I'm the Holy Hermit and I welcome you to my timeless tales. I have a new story for you today, a story of the birth of our sun. The story begins at the Big Bang and ends 5 billion years into our future. This of course is a hypothetical scenario of an event that is bound to happen in our future. But as always, I tell this tale not on the basis of my scientific background, but the tale I shall present will be from the eyes of a poet. So I hope you like it then, here I begin. You wonder where you come from, who you are, what are the things that make you into your true self. Sit down, I have a tale to tell. Listen to me, your wise being, and may you find the answers you so dearly seek. Now you're wondering who am I. My name is Hydrogen, but you can call me Mr. H. This tale I'm about to tell you predates everything you know. Everything. In a time long, long ago, when darkness roamed the lands of old, everything was in chaos. Beings wandered afar, here and there. No purpose, no story. Just emptiness that grew bigger and bigger. An almighty presence always lurked, reminding every being of a powerful thunder. It is something no being ever saw, but I still feel it to this very day. But there is a strange thing about chaos. It can only last for so far. Where there is cold, warmth must to prevail. The world you call as universe was finally understanding the meaning of order. Anger and chill was being subsided by love and breeze. New life began then, in its own solace, in its own seclusion. But just like your kind are meant to be drawn to each other, so were these ancestors of yours and mine. Two beloved souls, with affinity at their hearts, joined each other's hands and made the biggest sacrifice of them all. Their love drew them together forever and ever, but never shall they be in each other's arms. This great sacrifice was hailed by the universe. It shed a tear and allowed this kind of love to flourish everywhere. And so was the time when my kind was born, purest of all beings, simplest of all beings, oldest of all beings. <laughs> Be patient, tiny human. This was just the story of my birth. There's a lot more left to tell. So where was I? Ah, yes. History has a way to repeat itself. Every generation goes through similar struggles. Only the players change. The grand game always stays the same. New life like mine sprung up everywhere in the universe. All far apart from each other. All drifting without remorse. But then, out of chance, or forces that are not understood by the likes of yours and my kind, we found each other. The world was getting colder and colder outside. But as we moved closer, our warmth united us, and we began to assemble and form a large community. It was not just us with the communion of new souls, but other place also had life stringing to each other. I could not speak to them, nor could I hear them, but I knew in my heart we all were after one thing alone. It was warmth. So as we floated in the timeless ocean, our numbers began to grow. 
we started to organize ourselves. No more personal chit chat. We had a goal, and this goal is what you need to listen to and understand with great need. We wanted to bring light to the darkness around us. Too long have we sat in the dark. It was our warmth that kept us alive, and it was time then to share this warmth with this new world. And so began our great struggle. It lasted for eons, but time was a luxury we all had. They say you have seven lives. Ever wondered where that expression comes from? The seven stages of struggle. That's what our large community went through. Our first struggle was to find more warmth in the cold around us. This took a long time, but as I said, time is what we had in plenty. Our numbers kept growing, and we were many. So the next labor was on its way. Warmth is what we all desired. We all gathered together, holding hands, and for most part, it all worked. The center of our world became warm. We had a few stragglers, though. Some souls didn't like this idea. They kept leaving. Others gathered in small packs, generating their own warmth. But the world then, as it is now, is a cruel place. Their work was frozen by eternal chill, but our spirit was unfathomable. We held our hands, and more who realized this truth also joined us. Our warmth was growing, and we formed a huge sphere. It is way larger than what you see right now, and it was the happiest time of our lives. But more work had to be done, so we kept moving closer and closer until our spheres became hotter and hotter. A soul is hard to understand. I am sure you will agree too. As we were closer to each other than ever before, we started to compete with one another. Ah oh well. It was all for the greater good. Our sphere was coming to life. It was shaking, and we gave rise to warm winds engulfing the sphere altogether. All was going well, but still we could not light up the eternal spark. More was needed. An inconceivable sacrifice must be made. So we did the only thing we knew, what we learned from our forefathers. We fused with each other. And this meant sacrificing our souls. But such was the resolve of my kind that we never hesitated, even for a single moment. All we knew, the only solution we had, had finally worked. Our sphere was now glowing with warmth, and everything around us was bright. Most of us questioned this act of ours, whether this was all worth the sacrifices they were making. But then, out in distance. We saw your home. It was surrounded in dust and clouds, and it was glowing as well. To see our efforts being fruitful, we all reached an agreement with ourselves, a pact that involved our swarm. As time went by, we kept our promise, and then we saw our children, born out of sacrifice. We sat at distance, admiring, wondering what future holds for your kind. But we are getting older now. There is only so much more we can do. We tried to keep the warmth around you, but our numbers were dwindling. As we became more aware and our consciousness grew tenfold, there was no way to radiate warmth indefinitely. So we decided to go out with a bang, gather our strengths for one last time, and explode our spheres so we may all fly with our hopes to start our union again. We knew that our children have grown up, that they would sense our plans and fly away from this nest. So here you are, my child, waiting to leave your home, and I am the last of my kind here. When I am done with my act, there will be no more warmth here, except the eternal flame, the flame that resides in you, my child. Go on and spread this message of mine. This world, this universe of yours, it is a vast, cold, and lonely place. But the very act of your and my kind living here proves that we are what we do, and we do what we think is right. Our acts, our deeds, defines not just our kind, but the ones that follow our footsteps. One by one, we all fall. 
Such is the eternal will. Such is the eternal law. But whether we leave this world with a bang or a burst, that, my child, depends entirely on you. I hope you enjoyed this video of mine. This has been the Holy Hermit for you. Subscribe if this video made some kind of silly sense to you. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Other than that, take care of yourself and always keep questioning.